Hello guys and welcome back to Repair and Resale. In today's video we're going to take a look at uh, this controller right here. The problem with this controller is that it has uh, some loose vibration and the tricks that we're going to see in today's video also work if you have some uh, rattling sound coming out of your controller when you're shaking it. And uh, as usual if you want to know how to test your controller or how to open it I will leave links in the description below. Uh, for you to uh, watch them and to know how to do it but for the moment we're gonna go straight to the repair and we're gonna open this controller off camera so once you have opened your controller you will need to take a look at the different part and maybe shake them a little bit to see if the vibration is coming from there as you can see uh, it's it's it will not happen really often that the the the, the rattling part or the noise are coming from this one but if you see any plastic big bit falling off this could be uh, good for you so i'm gonna put this uh, pieces apart and we will focus more on this one and on this one the main problem that was having this controller is that this plastic piece right here break off so it need to be replaced um also you can try to shake this part right here to know if it's uh, the the um, vibration is coming from there and what i can tell you also is that sometimes when you shake your controller it's actually that the battery is moving inside uh, the controller uh, what you can do to put um to fix this problem is that you put a little bit of adhesive nothing that will glue the battery permanently to this black cover but something that will just uh, hold the battery enough and that will uh, allow you to uh, to uh, maintain it in place. It can also be this black cover that has some broken pins or something like this uh, then that you need to replace it for it to have a better grip on the board but all that you will see it while uh, opening your controller so for me i will show you how to fix this problem right here and as i as i already show you uh what you could do to try and to uh reduce a more minor problem so for the moment i'm just going to remove the battery uh just to avoid to cause any involuntary damage to the controller so once i remove that and also if you notice i already unsoldered these uh, run ball motor right here because uh, this uh, controller was already needing some repair and what you can do now is that you can just take all this out this should came off right there and you can also try to shake that ear to see if there is some uh, p plastic piece that will come off and just make sh be careful for the button there is uh, the, the touchpad and as you can see there was none right here so good news so I'm just gonna put that back and we're gonna be able to put that part aside too just gonna put the button back on just like that and I'm gonna put it aside too now we're gonna take a closer look to this one here I'm gonna put back my pair of tweezer and what we can see here is that we have a, a broken piece right there uh, that is was holding the rumble motor in place um, what I like to do is that I like to change these for a, a new one that would basically do the same job but you could if you don't want to do all this what you can do is that you can just try to glue it back with maybe hot glue or something strong enough that will resist to the vibration i don't know how long it could hold in place but maybe you can try it it's better than nothing and if you don't like how it's uh, how it's holding in place then you can try to change it so in today's video we're gonna see how we can change that so First of all, I'm gonna uh, remove the motherboard from here and we're gonna start to transfer all the pieces on this one right here. So, on this particular model, there is four pins holding the motherboard at the, on each side. So I'm gonna remove them and we're gonna get the board out of there. So I think I'm gonna take the tweezer for this. just like that and here there was a plastic piece that fell off maybe this 
could cause also some rattling noise, but it's not really important for us right now. I'm gonna put it aside. And this also fell off because the wire were held in place by the <laughs> motherboard. And uh, now we're gonna start build taking all the parts from this uh, piece right here, and we're gonna put them on this one right there. So I'm gonna put some timestamp to the video to uh, help you out so I'm gonna put the motherboard aside and we're gonna start doing this so why not starting with the trigger uh, what I like with the trigger is I like to take a small uh, flathead screwdriver and all I do is you uh, you can also try to remove them by like this this also work but if you have some difficulty with uh, this method what you can do is that you pry it a bit like that and you use your screwdriver to uh, remove it just like this and make sure not to lose uh, those little springs on the side of it or you will not be really happy with it and you will need to insert them back. So uh, for the R1 button and the L1 button, there is two little tabs, one right here on the side. And all I will do is lift it up. I will, usually it's easier to do on when the, the, the pieces is on, but I'll, I'm pretty sure I will succeed to do it. Maybe I will just speed this up. This one is okay. Here we go, pretty easy. We can also remove those pads, they are pretty easy. You just pull on them gently, make sure to not rip uh, the, this little uh, ribbon, uh, this little conductive film under it, because we will need it for to put on the other one, and we don't want to, uh, to break it. So now we're gonna remove that conductive film pretty easy job to do sometimes it's in one piece uh, all we will do is that we will do this gently I think I will just take a pair of tweezers just to get underneath and to lift all it up so what I like to do just like this And here we go, all the pins are removed. And we're just gonna take this and take it over. Okay, it's still attached to the board at the back. Very really important to remove to remove it from the back here. Sorry, I'm gonna take my other end. So this is going there. There is little tabs, here we go, you see it's been removed. And we're gonna just flip it there and it's gonna flip around. Just like this, and it should be easier to pass it off. Usually I pinch it a bit here, and it's easier to remove just like that. And now we have one off, we're gonna do the other one. Let's not forget the spring, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove them. Just they, they have different way to put them on, so make sure you put it exactly the same way on your controller. So I'm gonna try to put it in. Like this, and I'm gonna use the tweezer to uh, finish the job. It's actually a bit hard to do. think I got it just like that seems to be on correctly you see uh, we're gonna put this these uh, back on right now so we're gonna start with the one with the d-pad just like that and we're gonna slide this in before just like that and it's not really hard to put on you know, you see it's already on and we will just need to replace some uh, the pads on it. So we're gonna flip this over. Oh, and before you put it on, 
I was about to forget about it. You see there is a little pad here. You will need to remove them from this uh, controller and to put them here is to make sure uh, the conductive film that uh, we saw have a good contact with the board and it's actually a really important part for this uh, controller. So what I do is I use a small flat air screwdriver and I try to wiggle my way here trying to keep the adhesive on not rip anything off and usually I get good results. Here we go. So I'm gonna put this on. You see? Easy like this. And there is enough adhesive for it to hold really well to uh, the other inner frame. And now I will clip back this on right here. Just like this. And it's perfectly in place too. So we're going to install this right now. Oops, that's the wrong one. We're going to install it on this one. And it's pretty easy. What you want to do is there is two holes right here. And you want to put it right on these two holes. Just like that. And attach it to the side. And what I like to do again is to uh, take a pair of tweezers. And I'm just going to do a gentle press on both sides. To make sure it sits in correctly and it has no problem there's also a little latch right here for on this model so i'm making sure it's attached correctly now it's pretty easy to put the rest of the button on so we're gonna start with the l1 and r1 button make sure you put them on the right side so here we go l1 goes here just like that and make sure you have that nice clicking sound. Just like that. Again. And now we're going to put the other one. R1 and uh, R2 and L2. So for these one, you want to make sure that the spring goes underneath the button. And just like this. So it's spring back up. Another step we can do is that we can uh, do the little speaker right here. Uh, first we're going to remove this speaker grid. We're going to try to be really careful. Again I'm going to take this small flathead screwdriver and I'm just going to try to remove the adhesive on the side really carefully. Always be careful when you uh, doing this. It's better safe than sorry because I don't even know if there's a way to get another sp speaker grid like this and we're gonna go slowly and peel it off like that and we should have again enough adhesive to put it on the other one and just like this And the speaker grid is back on. Now I'm going to see if I can remove this. I'm going to take a plastic tool in order to do so. Here we go. I, 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 I hear it coming off. So from the left. Whoops. I clips it back in, I think. slowly coming off just like that here I got it so pretty easy to put in just make sure it stay on the same side to have the contact with those two pins right here on the motherboard so you saw like this it has contact with those two metal pins right here and it's allow the speaker to work correctly so I'm just gonna put it like this and it's back on just like that and this speaker is going to work perfectly now but the only part left on this uh, here is actually the uh, rumble motor 
And for this, you're gonna need a stronger flat edge screwdriver because it's actually glued in with some double face adhesive tape and it is pretty strong. What you want to do here basically is that you want to uh, weaken the adhesive tape. So you're trying to do your best to uh, wiggle your way around the speaker. Not the speaker, but the rumble motor. You're trying to apply some force right there. And there should also be enough adhesive left to uh, to uh, glue it back to the other one. And it can be a bit hard to uh, dislodge it because, uh, as I say, it's really strongly in place. And be careful with the wire also not to uh, to cut them, for example, with your screwdriver. I think I'm starting to get it. I'm gonna try that one too. Trying to get it out with the with twisting a bit. I think I hear it. Uh, yeah, definitely. So, is it starting to come off? Yeah. The once the sticking is off, you can actually get it out uh, pretty good. So this one was on this side, so we're gonna put it back there. And after that, all you need to do left is to solder it back to the board. And as you can see, it's firming back on and it will not move. So now for the motherboard, uh, what you need to do is make sure that the rumble motor wire are out of the way and you just want to clip it back on. Also, I uh, replaced that little white part of camera because it was not placed uh, correctly. So now I'm going to put it back on and it should clip just fine, just like this. And now I can feel it like it uh, has a really firm grip here. And now we can put back the other pieces of the controller that we put aside, like this one. This one is uh, pretty simple. You put it there and I will just twist it, this uh, little uh, cable like this. And then I'm going to put it back on and I'm going to try to make it pass through its hole. Just right there at the top. And you can put it back on just like that and the touchpad is now back and now you have a screw that is going there so as simple as that and also you should be supposed to resolder those uh, wire on the board and as I can see I didn't leave them enough enough space to get them so I will also need to uh, replace these rumble motor maybe make sure to avoid to make the, these mistakes and now all I have left to do is to replug that battery pretty simple just put it on the right side huh? just like this and if you put some adhesive for the battery it will not uh, move anymore and I will show it to you uh, with a, uh, a cold uh, soldering iron it's not on but basically all you got to do with your iron is that you take a pair of tweezers for the rumble motor you take uh, the cable I just take the good one and usually the black goes on the top because it's more on the, the side here and the red one goes on the bottom same thing for the other side as the red is on the top it goes on top and as the black is on the bottom it goes on the bottom so what you want to do is that you simply grab it you put it on the pad where it goes and you will just put the soldering iron on it and it should have enough solder to uh, stick to it 
So I'm just telling it to you because you will need it if you decide to replace uh, the whole inner frame. And same thing from for the other side. And the last step is basically to put back that cover on. And I'm just gonna slide it in just like that. And we should be able to put this back in. On this one, there is a small problem. It's not uh, closing correctly, so I will have to take a look at it. So what I did of camera is that I replaced the rumble motor correctly, and also I had to send some part of the new frame because there was some extra plastic bit at some place, and it was preventing uh, the controller from closing correctly. And now it should be all good. So let's see that. Yep. Now that this is done, uh, we look at this, this is way better. So now the controller is fully fixed and everything is working super fine and there is no more rattling nose and no more loose vibration. So this is pretty good and I hope that you enjoyed this video, that it will be useful for your repair and have a nice day.